welcome back it is still the run-up before we went on that break i told you we will be talking about a bill uh, this bill actually was seeking financial and legislative autonomy for local governments and it has been rejected by state houses of assembly uh, there has been a lot of talk around local governments and how they are more like rubber stamps mm. in the hands of state governors. And in fact, matter of fact, as of today in Nigeria, some states do not have local government chairmen. They do not have local government councils that are functional, even mm. though the buildings are there. Mm. Uh, whatever happens in the local government areas, they would have to come cap in hand to the state governors, mm. even though they are... Um, duties assigned to this level money of government to and they're the supposed government. to be allocation mm -hmm. going to them but uh, uh you know a lot of things has been a lot of this has been swept under the carpet or should i say taken over by you know the state uh, uh, state government and now they keep trying they keep trying some states need to beg and beg and talk and talk before there are local government elections happening in the state and even when it happens these people these chairmen these councillors cannot do anything except yeah. it is assigned by the state governor and now they are seeking for financial and legislative autonomy which i think is what is supposed to be i mean it's constitutional oh, sorry, yeah. right so why are they rejecting it I, I don't even know if this is a, supposed to be a new bill or something because uh, I I know the pronouncements that uh, President Muhammad Buhari made about local government and how they are autonomous and should operate as autonomous mm -hmm. being. So now a bill going to that, I, I need to I need to find out what the real <laughs> the real meat of this bill mm -hmm. is. What is the different thing that is now trying to define autonomy, financial and legislative autonomy of local governments, and why the state assemblies will be rejecting this kind of a bill? But Bio, now that we're trying to talk about um, how Nigeria will relate uh, with the the entire globe, and now from home, let's start from home, where because sometimes they say. If you keep abusing your father mm. in the public, it, there's a tendency that everybody will now we'll look at your father you. as, you know. So if we cannot get it right at home, I'm wondering how we can get it right on the global scene in terms of how we relate with them and every other uh, country, every other independent state that we'll be dealing with. Let's begin with this bill and go over to how Nigeria should relate with the entire world in our foreign policy. Um, well, the the um, the issue is that from and this is a very emotive issue, so I have to be careful uh, so that I'm not misunderstood. <laughs> um, you see, from from 1999, it became obvious that states in Nigeria, the 36 states in Nigeria, did not appear comfortable with the local government components of their states having any form of autonomy. Uh, and the easiest place in which you would find this is in the revenue allocation. The Constitution of Nigeria 1999 um, provides for three tiers of government, the federal government, the state governments, and the local governments. And then the federal government has matters on which it can legislate, listed on the exclusive list. This includes defense, foreign policy, and so on. The states have matters on which they can legislate on the residual list, and the states and the federal government can both legislate on matters on the concurrent list. Mm. Now, certain, certain aspects of the uh, state functions are allocated to local governments. Primary health care, for instance, primary school education, uh, issuance of uh, driver's licenses, issuance of uh, license plates for cars, uh, wine of license for bars and things like that, so that state local governments can generate revenue. And that was why co the constitution went ahead to specifically mention how many local governments there are in the country, 774, which, by the way, is debatable because many feel that some states have way too many local governments, especially given the kind of population profile that they have. Now, having said that, the fact remains that the states irrespective of whichever political party was in control in those states. None of them was comfortable with local governments being autonomous. And we have seen that battle going on till today. And maybe President Obasanjo and President 
Buhari have been very pronounced and very vocal. Um, President Yaradwa, we didn't hear him say much about it. President Jonathan probably didn't say too much about it. But it tells us that all is not well with our local governments, and we know that. Issues that are supposed to be dealt with by the local governments, maybe I wake up in the morning and the gutter in front of my house is flooded. I just mentioned the president's name. I say I don't know what the president is doing because the gutter in front of my house is flooded. Maybe a car breaks down somewhere and causes traffic jam. I start shouting, I don't know what the president is doing. The fact remains that some of these things are actually things that the councillors or the local government chairman should be dealing with. Yeah. And then some are the state governments. But everybody now in Nigeria, they don't even talk about governments. So when something is not working, they just call the president, whether it was Jonathan or Basanjo or Buhari or whoever. So we need to really, and I, I support this bill, and, and I don't see why states should be opposed to it. It simply just shows that they have muzzled the local government system. And maybe we should be realistic enough and say, fine, we scrap local governments. Let's just have the federal and state governments. Which is, which is wrong, because if, if a, a bridge linking two villages collapses mm. in one of the 774 <laughs> local governments, in, in fact, this is a village in a local government, one, uh, 774 is already a big number, and this is for local government, mm -hmm. but a village to village, I should be able to carry placards to the local government, or to the councillor even, mm -hmm. and say, uh, we need this bridge to be done. And he will escalate it to the chairman. But how do you go to Buhari, for instance, and say the village bridge has collapsed? Mm. If there is no local government, we cannot function. And that is uh, one of the many anomalies, uh, anomalies excuse me, that we've had to deal with. I mean, we, we are dealing with. Because even the people that have local government chairmen, how many of these chairmen reside in the local government? How many of them stay where you can have access to them? So let us assume that there is a Nyamgu in Ogu, local government area of Enugu State, for instance, and you know your rights, mm -hmm. and the bridge in front of your house just collapsed, mm -hmm. and you're going to go and find your local government chairman. You will see constituency He's office. probably living in Abuja, <laughs> or he's yeah. somewhere in Lagos. It's, it's annoying. That is so, if he's not on a trip to Dubai, Africa. or he's uh, in the U.S., uh, uh, you know? It's, it's yeah. crazy. I, 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 you know, we keep talking on this program how everything is intertwined and connected. So you happen to have a state governor who understands that you need a local government chairman. You have one. You have a local government chairman. Who holds him accountable? Is it, I think one of the governors, I think um, one of the states in the East, too, one of the governors made sure, he made it a law that every local government chairman needs to reside in their local government. It was working for a while mm. until, you know, the Nigerian factor came in and people moved on. Nobody's asking questions anymore. But it shouldn't even be something that we need to be talking about. I mean, it's constitutional. Mm. You cannot say that you're the governor of a state and you're living in Lagos. You're living in Abuja. It, it's not heard of. You're supposed to be in the government house. And that is how a local government chairman is supposed to be in the local government quarters or something or somewhere. But so should I just be around so that people can have access to you anyway bio well <laughs> nigeria needs to relate because the next pr uh, president is coming the next the next administration which will include the president and even all the governors because they have to be like the first think tank before any other person so when they come into office how do we how do we relate? We, because we have Asia there, we have, uh, we have Europe there, we have other, other continents. You know, now the scramble for Africa is fresh. The, mm -hmm. It's not the old one. Now it is a new scramble for Africa. W what do you think the next administration should do uh, to set boundaries, to set uh, uh, templates, to set everything? of how Nigeria should be relating with other countries, especially outside Africa. We've dealt with ECOWAS, we've dealt with Africa, mm. but here, by way of suggestion, what do they have to look into most? Well, yeah, the, the challenge today, uh, and uh, I think there was an allusion to that yesterday, is that um, there's going to be a new world system. In my view, I, I think we'll have some people were saying the world was there was a uni, it was a unipolar world. I never believed that. There was a dominant hegemon. Okay, uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, we had the dominant hegemon, which is the United States. But I I don't see that as translating into a unipolar world. That hegemon 
dominated for a long time. Now, through dialectics, things that were done in a particular way, expecting a particular result of getting something else, the entire global system is undergoing change. And I think particularly that, that change is being triggered by the current conflict between Russia and Ukraine. And whether that conflict ends soon or not, it's very likely we are going to have a trilateral polar world where the dominant hegemons will be the United States, Russia, and China. Uh, and then how do we relate in this environment? We used to have the non-aligned movement in the 70s when we had uh, Russia, the Soviet Union and, and the United States, which was a, you know, which was a, a world dominated by two superpowers. You know? But now, uh, with what is happening, I think our foreign policy elite need to start reflecting on how the next president of Nigeria will have to come up with a policy that can ensure that Nigeria navigates this trilateral polar world that is going to emerge in a way that benefits our interests. In my view, Nigeria should not side with any of these three. We should not side with Russia. We should not side with the US. We should not side with China. We should have a constructive uh, engagement in a way that benefits us. Now, if you look at the trade profile, let's just use 2022. You would see that the trade between Nigeria and the United States was just 174 million US dollars. Whereas, the, I mean, okay, we, if we say Nigeria, the next president of Nigeria and North America, uh, although I'm limiting it to the US, North America includes Canada and Mexico, but largely we've been trading with, um, with the United States and it's just 174 million dollars uh, if, the, if the figures I have access to are correct for 2022. Our trade with Europe for 2022 has been 28.7 billion euros. Whereas our trade with Asia, and when I say Asia, I'm limiting it only to China and India. So I'm not including uh, South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, and all of that. Our trade with Asia has been 41 billion US dollars. So you look at the gap between our trade with Asia, largely China and India, and our trade with, it's, it's almost double our trade with Europe. And what does that tell us? The powerhouse is Asia. And it's not just us. I, I often make a joke and say, sometimes when some of my friends tell me, oh, the Chinese have taken over Africa. And I make a joke and I say, you look at the English premiership teams. Most people in, in Nigeria watch English premiership every weekend. And you watch all the teams in the Premier League and tell me how many of them have Chinese advertisement on their shirts? Not even in English, in Chinese. Okay, so when people say the Chinese are taking over Africa, they are being clever by half. Because the Chinese and the economic behemoth that they have become has seen them superintending over almost all the major economies in the world. So the next president of Nigeria must be able to harness our relationship in so many areas with all these major powers in a way that benefits us and does not compromise our neutrality. It's not going to be in the interest of Nigeria to side with any of these major powers because this whole new process is still evolving. Now, having said that, one other thing I feel the next president of Nigeria should be doing is looking at how to harness the Nigerian diaspora. The Nigerian diaspora is massive. Yeah. And I think after the Indians, we have the largest diaspora in the world. At the minimum, at the minimum, and through formal transfer channels like banks and Western Union and MoneyGram and so on, Nigerian diaspora sends back to Nigeria every year nothing less than 20 billion US dollars. So you can imagine what even comes into the country informally. Maybe you visit UK and the relative gives you $300, $300 pounds. Say, give this to mama when you get home. That one didn't come through any bank. It didn't come through Western Union. Right. It didn't come through money grant, right? So you see the massive influence of the Nigerian diaspora, the professionals and so on. So how do we engage the Nigerian diaspora for the benefit of Nigeria? And I think the president, uh, the Gwari administration has done something that by setting up the diaspora commission. But like I said yesterday, the next president of Nigeria must make sure that the Diaspora Commission does not take over the responsibility of the Minister of Foreign Affairs. All because right. the Diaspora I, I, yeah. I'm going oh, to go I'm on, going go. to 
Barrel, please allow me to cut you short here yeah? because if we keep having this conversation, we won't read the news today. <laughs> but, the, you know, a question that you, you asked, how do we harness the Nigerian diaspora? Along with that, when we come back from the news, we're also going to be looking at something else that you said because you, you mentioned, you know, when you were mentioning the power blocks and Asia and Russia, mm. and you said Nigeria must not take sides. I wonder how we cannot take sides mm -hmm. when... We are owing some of these people, but this is a conversation we will have when we return from this quick break. The news will come up at noon and the run-up will come after that. Stay with us.